Breakfast and lunch, breakfast and lunch, brunch. We're gonna mash the two together with two of my all-time childhood favorites, peanut butter and jelly. Come on. And French toast. Come on. Peanut butter and jelly stuffed French toast. Let's get into the action. We're lighting the grill and there's charcoal left over from a previous cook. We're gonna use our ash tool and rake it around and that's gonna help all that dust fall to the bottom in the ash drawer. Uh, let's go ahead and light the grill and we're gonna open our draft door and pull out all that ash, discard it, place the, the tray back in. Now we're gonna have great airflow, leave that dome open for about 10 to 15 minutes, let it come to temperature. Now let's go ahead and jump in and throw that cast iron griddle directly on top and let it start soaking up some of that heat. And notice how my fire is a little bit right of center. Uh, I'm only using one accessory today for, for French toast, so uh, I want that heat directly underneath. So I'm gonna draw some of this charcoal directly under the cast iron. Got a nice bed of embers there. Let's go ahead and close the grill, swivel our control tower open, and I want to climb to about 400 and then start dampering it down a little bit. Remember when you're using ceramic grills, Kamada Joe's, uh, you don't hit the temperature and then react. You want to pretend that the, the draft door on the bottom is your break, uh, you know, and, and, and just start slowing things down. So this is a big temperature changer here. And then if this is closed, this is small adjustments to temperature here. So as we're approaching the temperature that we're gunning for, we start reacting before we get to temperature and then overshoot. So the last thing we want to do is burn up this uh, beautiful uh, peanut butter and jelly French toast. Uh, instead of going with straight, you know, schmuckers jam, uh, we've chosen a little raspberry preserve today. So just a slight elevation there. Um, let's go ahead and slice our bread. I got a brioche loaf here. And you want to go kind of thick on this because it's going to drink up some of the custard mixture. That's what I'm looking for. What's that, Nate? About a quarter of an inch there? Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at the wedge. Okay, <laughs> well, hold I wasn't on. I not say anything. But... Amateur hour here. <laughs> but you don't, you don't want a freaking wedge. I mean, I know we could squish that flat and we'd be all right, but try to cut straight cuts. Okay, let's do that again. Let's do that again. So I'm going to start up top and then kind of keep an eye. Jeez Louise. Unbelievable. <laughs> and that's what we're looking for a proper slice, okay? And let's do let's do two sandwiches today. Two I appreciate sandwiches. that. Yeah, yeah. There are two of us. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I'm not supposed to be eating bread, but I'm gonna do it today because uh, this is just a great breakfast pickup. You know, it's so much fun. People are always saying, "Hey, what other breakfast items can I do on the grill?" Well, this is it. So we've got our bread cut. Spread it out so the air can start getting to that a little bit. Uh, and this doesn't have to be fresh bread, right? One of the beauties of doing something like a bread pudding or making croutons or making French toast is you can use day old or two or three day old bread. It's okay if it's crusty. In fact, sometimes it's even better if it is. So we're gonna start with three eggs from Nathan's chickens. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. It's easier to whip the eggs while there's nothing else in there, right? So before we put our dairy in there, it's easier to go ahead and whip this now. It's just not as loose, you know? It's all tight, it's all there. Okay, let's talk about the, mi the milk here. Uh, you've got options. You've got uh, 2% whole milk. You've got uh, half and half you could use. You could use heavy cream if you wanted to. Today, <laughs> today we're gonna use a. This is this is pro move from my good friend Nathan here. Um, I didn't say it was pro. I said it was delicious. Yeah, I don't want to like this, and I know I'm gonna like it a lot. So coffee creamer. We're going vanilla right now. Uh, we could have gone hazelnut if it were October. Perhaps we're going pumpkin spice. Too early? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you want about a cup and a half to three eggs here, and we are straight up using coffee creamer. So. Now it's a custard. Once you add a uh, milk or milk product to, well not cheese, but like a milk to eggs, it raises up the coagulation temperature, meaning we're gonna be able to get a nice 
beautiful caramelized crust without it tasting like eggs and we're going to be able to take it to a higher heat so that is gorgeous no need to add vanilla no need to add sugar because we've got our good friend here coffee mate <laughs> uh lift, doing the heavy work for us all right let's go ahead and make our peanut butter and jellies and then we're going to put it in the mixture so two knives peanut butter and go hard on this you know what i mean so i like to you know do a little best of both worlds when you think oh what peanut butter creamy versus crunchy i like to do the creamy and then i like to go find uh honey roasted uh peanuts okay yeah uh just another slight little elevation here and we're gonna take the biggest knife we can find <laughs> True, true chef fashion uh, and just run a knife through some of these gorgeous peanuts we're gonna save some of these as well for garnish and now for the raspberry preserves uh, and use whatever you like use whatever jelly you're into I just love the idea of raspberries we saw lingonberry we almost went for that oh come on oh yeah and don't be shy and then straight into our custard mixture. And since this is fresh, it really drinks it up quick. If it were two day old bread, we'd leave it in there for a little longer. Uh, let's go ahead and examine our grill and see if we're to temperature. So we're sitting at 300 right now. That's a pretty good, that's not too aggressive. I, I'd like to see the heat a little higher. Let's just take a look. I always like to put my hand over the piece. Okay, and, that, and that's hot, but I want, I want, let's get at least, let's get at least 375 here. We don't want screaming hot because then it'll burn the outside before all that soaked up bread can, can turn into deliciousness. So I'm going to leave the dome open right now because all I need at this point is to get a little more heat on that cast iron. Unsalted butter. You can use oil if you want to, but come on, man. Let's see, you know, we're, we're going butter here. Cast iron griddle. That's smooth action right there. Now with a slotted fish spatula, I'm just gonna kind of sneak in here, gently peanut butter and jelly, and put it right on top of that butter. The same with the other one, I wanna draw some of that butter. I'm gonna shut that dome and let it sit for about 45 seconds to a minute. And there's so much moisture content that that flame kiss flavor from the natural lump charcoal is going to adhere to our, I'm gonna say grilled cheese. Uh, we made grilled cheese yesterday, uh, to our French toast. All right, so I can, I can hear the bubbles, I can hear what's going on. I want desperately to open it, but let's, <laughs> let's just hang out for just a second. A little shimmy underneath. A little positive pressure here and a flip. Oh, that's what I've been missing. <laughs> if you want a little more color in there, leave, leave it on for another minute, but that's A-OK -okay for me. We've got enough butter here. Watch this. We can kind of draw that butter because we're on a slight hill right now. And let that other side finish up, and then we just, uh, just got to plate it up and garnish it and take a big old bite. Pretty excited about this one, team. Let's take a look. Notice how the edges are a little springy still. Um, you know, we really want it to hold its shape, so I'm gonna leave it on the grill for a little bit longer, just to crisp up a touch. And feel free to flip these things to get exactly where you want them. We're well on our way. Now nah, we're getting there. A Little more color, a little more structure. Again, if this bread was, you know, a little more stale, had a little bit more structure to it because of that, uh, we'd be done by now. But this is going to have an incredible textural contrast and mouthfeel. Beautiful things are happening. So in total, flipping back and forth, that was probably a four minute cook with that soft bread that soaked up that custard mixture. Let's take a look at why I'm loving this right now. Bit of a serrated knife. I don't know if it's serrated. Yeah, serrated knife. Okay, so we've got these gorgeous sandos, and that peanut butter will tighten up as the air is hitting it. Uh, let's garnish and finish this plate. Let's do, you know, little berries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Let's go with some of those honey roasted peanuts, and then a fair amount of powdered sugar. And that, my friends, peanut butter and jelly stuffed. French toast. Let's give this beauty a go. 
Oh my gosh. That's sensational. I've never had peanut butter give me that experience before. <laughs> like that is that is fantastic. You can sub out a lot of things for this, right? The the creamer brought that vanilla and that's absolutely perfect. Great viscosity for the custard mixture. Uh, the crunch on the outside, the softness of the entire thing. That's a, that's a home run all the way around. That's got breakfast, brunch, lunch. That's got all of it. Breakfast for dinner, don't forget that one. Uh, folks, if you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it for you, do me a favor, do all the things. Hit the subscribe button, notification button, do leave a comment. Uh, what would you choose for your jelly in there or preserve? Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us, and as always, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.